All right, guys, what's going on? Uh, been cutting, splitting wood today. Y'all seen some shorts that I put up, just goofing around. Uh, we was working and trying to have fun all at the same time. Well, kind of working. Let me ease you up a little bit. Uh, I've got the uh, full wrap and... Uh, Another 28 inch steel light bar coming for the, uh, for the, uh, 661 here because I put the 28 inch light bar on the 462. Uh, and honestly, it feels really good on that saw. It's not terrible. Like, uh, it's not as bad off balance as it, as the 28 inch was on the 500i. So, uh, what I'm going to do is run uh, the 25 inch, 24 inch, whatever you want to call it, on the 400 and the 500, and then run the 28 lights on the 661 and the 462. But uh, <clears throat> I also got some new chain coming that I've I've never used this chain before, uh, and I you probably don't care, but I'm going to wait till it gets here to show you. We'll see how it does. Uh, I hope it does pretty well because I've bought a whole loop of it. Uh, it may lead into more things or uh, it may not. You'll know what I'm talking about when it comes in. But also what I have done is uh, I'm not on TikTok. I don't do any video on TikTok because for one, I don't know how to work TikTok. And for two, uh, YouTube already takes up a tremendous amount of time and work and not that I care to do it because I enjoy making the content and the videos and everything but uh, I want to give my attention to one thing and and put 110 percent because when I do something as y'all probably can tell I went on a video making spree uh, this month when I do something I'm either uh, all in or i'm just about pretty much all out so uh that's just the way i've always been and it's kind of one of them deals so anyway I, I like doing the youtube thing i've got it figured out i know how to edit videos on my video editor and all that kind of stuff and i like the group of people that watches uh these videos on on youtube and not saying TikTok's bad, but I've noticed I follow a few tree cutters, timber cutters, loggers, and just uh, wood enthusiasts, I guess you could call it, on TikTok. And it seems like uh, a lot of times they get a lot of bad, negative, uh, not all of them, but they get quite a bit more bad, negative uh, comments and stuff than what you see on YouTube. And not that... I would respond to bad negative comments or whatever. I just don't want to deal with it, you know. Don't want to read it because 90% of the people that comment something silly, uh, they really don't know anything about it or never done it. All their info has come from either reading it in a book, uh, watching somebody else do it, or what they've heard somebody else tell them. So I, I take what most people say, unless I know they're an experienced timber cutter or really good at... Uh, what they do uh, with a grain of salt. And sometimes, like, like I said the other day, just because somebody's been doing it a long time don't always mean they're right. I mean, they may not be wrong, but the way they do things may not be the best way for you. So with that little spill uh, said, that, went, that ain't even what I wanted to talk about on this video, but I got off on it. So, but anyway, uh, oh, what I was getting at to that, uh, I follow this guy on TikTok and uh him and i he he's watches my youtube or he's seen some of my youtube videos anyway and he's commented some and he noticed where i was doing the uh suspension kits to the uh steel saws and uh he told me about proline these little foam pieces that we have here i've been changing them out which is yeah, I wish I'd known about it before. 
But Proline has these right here, these foam pieces. Like I've been buying the, the upgraded ones from West Coast Saw and they do all right in most of the saws. Uh, the 400 and the 500 is kind of st still too squishy. Uh, the 661 foam piece is. But he was telling me about Proline makes these, again, Proline, makes these in actual rubber. Like the rubber, I'm assuming, like the rubber is what these are made out of. So I've ordered me some of them, and they're not really that bad expensive. Uh, they're five or six bucks a piece, so that's not terrible. So if a man could get it, could get these from them, I don't know that you can, or could get them for, our, I don't know if a 660 has these or not. Let me look real quick. They kind of do, but they're kind of different in a way. But if you can just find these beefier ones at the same price, and Proline may even have them, uh, you could have you everything but the spring uh, fairly cheap. And I've looked at the springs, like the front little piece. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I've looked at just like these pieces right here on uh, eBay to see if I could get just the spring or whatever. And I couldn't find just the spring. I found this whole piece and it's like 40 or 50 bucks. So you're just about as well off to buy it from West Coast Saw for the money. Uh, but anyway, they got them rubberized. So when they come in, we're gonna check them out and uh, see how good they are. Uh, like I say, it may be better than the foam pieces as far as uh, taking the slop out. And another thing, I've heard some people say that uh, like these suspension kits or whatever, uh, you don't need them because the parts aren't wearing out. On, you know, there's nothing wrong with the parts or whatever. Uh, just take, for instance, you know, uh, I heard a pretty big YouTuber, and I'm not trying to discredit what they say or anything, but a pretty a pretty good size YouTuber say that uh, you didn't need to get a suspension kit for the 500i because the parts don't wear out. You know, they're not having any problems out of them. And what I'm getting at is, to me, the s suspension kits, and I can't always say it, are is not because of the parts wearing out. It is to make the saw stiffer than what it is from the factory. Uh, it's kind of like lifting your truck up and putting big wheels and tires on it. You're not putting the big wheels and tires on there <clears throat> because the parts wear out, the factory parts wear out quicker than the uh, like lift does, you know. It's, you're doing it because you want bigger wheels and tires. I didn't put the suspension kit on the 500i because the factory parts that come from steel was wearing out. I put the suspension kit on there because when you put a lower bar on there, it's a little floppy. Uh, I've heard several uh, big YouTubers say that too, that when you put a long bar on the 500i, uh, they're floppy, they're, you know, they feel like they're gonna fall apart. Not to say that the, the factory parts are gonna wear out, but it's just to be more comfortable, you know. <clears throat> so, you know, take that with what, with what you want to, you know. Uh, you don't have to have the suspension kits on any saw, like these steel saws. Uh, most of them do just fine the way they are, unless you get up to running like 32 inch, you know, bars or bigger. But, uh, and even me with the, the Husqvarna Auto-Tune saws, the 500 series Husky, 
they're a whole lot floppier than the 372s are. Just the only deal is, uh, nobody's made a suspension kit for them because, you know, I guess the same reason they don't make anything else for a Husky. Uh, Husky don't market it, or, you know, I guess there's not anybody that thinks there would be a market in it or something, or they would. Uh, but anyway, it, it's really, the suspension kits are really no different than, than putting a bark box on. You don't have to have a bark box, or uh, if you run Husky or whatever, uh, a dual port muffler or whatever, you don't have to have that. It just makes the saw better than what it was from the factory. And that's the same thing with the, the suspension kits. You don't have to have it. It just makes it better than it was from the factory. Just like porting a saw, you don't have to have that, but it makes it better. You get where I'm going with it. So, uh, you know, with that being said, that's why I bought it. Also, like the oiler uh, on the 400. Yeah, it'll, you know, the oiler that was in it will oil a... 25, 24 inch, whatever still wants to call it. It's really 24. Uh, I'm going to call it 24 because that's what it is. A 24 inch bar and chain. And that's about as big as a bar you would want to run on that saw. But if you ever wanted to run a 28, it would probably do it. But when you get into cutting uh, hardwoods and that big of a bar, and you get to leaning on the saw a little bit, and it kind of gets iffy. And plus, uh, like before I put that bigger oiler, and all I did was put just a regular 462 oiler in it. I didn't put no high flow oiler or nothing in it. And it works fine. You can see the oil slinging off the end of the bar. And that's what I like seeing. But I was only running one tank of gas to about a quarter or maybe even a half a tank of oil. And now I'm using anywhere from a half a tank to three quarter of a tank. So, you know, that is one of them deals too. You don't have to have it, but it makes it better than it was factory. It's putting more oil to the bar. You don't have to be as cautious with it is what I'm getting at. So, and that's with any upgrade to any saw. You don't have to do uh, any kind of muffler to a saw, a performance muffler, if you will, or exhaust, whatever. But you do it because it makes it better. And no, the suspension kit and the uh, upgraded oiler don't give the saw more power, but it does up the performance to me because it makes it more comfortable to run on the suspension kit. And two, it gives me ease of mind knowing that I can put a longer bar on there and it will still sling plenty of oil down through there. So that's, uh, and that what, <laughs> that ain't what this video was about either, but I may make another one and do actually what I was gonna do. Uh, but anyway, it's just a little shop talk. And like I say, I'm not trying to discredit anybody or say anybody's wrong, but I'm just wanting to, to give a different uh, opinion or an outlook on it. I mean, that that's like anything. You don't have to do, and you ain't gotta do nothing, you know, but you don't have to put a bigger turbo and bigger injectors in a truck, diesel truck, but it gives it more power and it's a whole lot more fun, you know. So, it's kind of one of them deals. It's just all in what you want to do, uh, you know. And like I say, there's, I wouldn't have to do half the stuff that uh, I've done to these steel saws, but uh, I like tinkering with them. And if I could get upgraded parts for Husky as as easily and readily available as I could have uh, the steels, 
and I would have been doing all that kind of stuff to my Husky saws. I mean, I put a, a different exhaust on my 395, you know, twin port. Uh, there's a guy that makes them. They're pretty expensive on eBay or whatever, but there are people that make them, but they're outrageous. Where these bark boxes are like factory made, or however they make them, and the reason well, they're like you can get the bark box for eighty bucks. I think that Husqvarna muffler was like uh, one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars. The best thing I remember. Everything that I found upgrades on the Husky are kind of expensive because there's just not a whole lot of people doing it. And if you do find somebody doing it, uh, it's like one person in a shop and they're not uh, production, you know, doing it production to lower the cost. So, but anyhow, uh, with that being said, uh, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I appreciate everybody liking and subscribing. And uh, like I say, uh, I guess what I'm getting at, if you feel like you need the suspension kit for the 500i, you don't like how it flops like I didn't like how it flops, and apparently like thousands of other people don't like how it flops, then if that's what you want to buy, buy it. But uh, if you're okay with it, the factory parts, I'm sure, are not going to wear out any quicker than any other saw. But they're made to make the saw a little stiffer. Where it ain't, like that 500i feels, felt it ain't as bad. It's still a little bit shaky, but it's tons better. And I'm thinking when I get that rubber grommet from Proline, I'm thinking that's gonna help out quite a bit. Uh, it just makes it daylight dark in between the saw. So, we'll catch y'all on the next one. And I know a lot of people, cause I've been wearing out Husky and stuff like that. And everybody's going, well, you don't have to do it to a Husky. No, you ain't got to, you ain't got to do it to a steel. But uh, there's things that I didn't like about the Husky 500 series saws. Apparently, or I wouldn't have sold every one that I had. And I had, uh, I don't know about every model, but I just about had every XP model of the new Huskies. Uh, I had the 550, 562, 572, and the 592. The 592 ran really, really good. Of course, I had some problems out of it. I've heard other people had problems out of them too. And some of my problems might have been brought on myself. Uh, I've heard some people still having problems with the 572 and the 562 hot starting issues. And uh, they're just way up on weight and way down on power compared to these steels. And you can say it's because I got the bark box or whatever, but I ran uh, the 462 and the 500i, I'm pretty sure, uh, in factory trim, and they was walking all over the Huskies. And I even run them with bark box and the filter, and they was beating saws that was uh, anywhere from five to nine cc's bigger than what they were uh so take that for what it's worth you know a lot of people say oh you sandbag there's no way i've run a 572 and it beat a 500i uh i'm gonna have to disagree with that i don't believe that you're going unless the 572 was ported if you got a 572 ported 572 then yeah it, it probably would beat the 500i because it's ported and it's not that big of a gap in between them but factory saw uh you ain't getting the 572 to beat no uh 500i at least the 572 i had uh so anyway so bet this video has been a lot of rambling and uh a lot of thoughts uh, but and i guess what i'm saying and you don't even have to take my word for it uh I do this so you can kind of see uh, what I'm doing and how it, it, it changes the saw or whatever on everything that I do. And sometimes I do stuff and I'll even tell you, uh, I'll go back and I'll revise things because I didn't quite like how uh, that it 
you know, made the saw or done it. I thought it'd be a good time, good idea at the time in my mind, and turns out to be that it wasn't that great of an idea. So, uh, normally what I do, if, if I'm looking for answers on stuff, I will go check out Sorry. I'll get on a lot of the forums. I'll watch several different people YouTube videos on it because if you got a question, pretty much there's a YouTube video on it. And uh, I'll take five or ten people's opinions on the forum, five or ten people's YouTube videos, see how their saw's running after they've done whatever I'm looking at, and then kind of make my own judgment. And if I know anybody personally that's got one, I'll ask them. So uh, that's really why I do uh, all the saw videos where I'm doing stuff saws. Uh, that's kind of why I do them is just to show you how it changes the saw and all that kind of stuff. And to give you info on stuff that you may have a question about. So anyhow, uh, but I'm not always right. And I'm not always wrong. Uh, I'm more right than wrong, I'd say. Uh, my wife might disagree with that. But anyway, uh, it's just one of them deals. you got to kind of take everybody's uh, opinions and then just do what you think you'll like. And sometimes it just don't work out. And sometimes it does. So, but anyhow, we'll catch you on the next one. I appreciate you. I've rambled long enough and I didn't even talk about what I was wanting to talk about on this video. And here we are 20 minutes and I haven't done nothing. So we'll catch you on the next one. Appreciate you. And woo, still is still your daddy.